Good afternoon. Good afternoon and welcome. Shall we begin with a word of prayer? Oh Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessings of the day. We thank you that we can come worship you and pray this um, afternoon, this midday. And we pray that you'll hasten those who are on their way. We also pray for the presence of the Holy Spirit as we discuss um, last day events, chapter 1. Thank you for the blessings. Keep us faithful, we ask in Jesus' worthy and precious name. Amen. Amen. We're going to start off with a song called Signs of the Times. We've seen them all around. Uh, they're not getting any better. But we know it's a sign that Jesus is coming again. Praise the Lord. That's Hallelujah. the only good news we have. That, that is the only good news we have. Jesus is coming again. traveling so we've um we, we got our standing book to to look at which is last day events and i'm just going to share the screen Well, 
I think they got to here, but that it did move. Sometimes the iPad moves when you you go back on it. So um, we near the end of down. I did, but I, I found it. But I, I've written the um, part four, but I haven't written what, where we got to. <laughs> Can't get the staff these days. It's definitely not. Yeah. <laughs> so I think if anybody's got any other thoughts that we got further or not as far, then please, um, please uh, tell us now or, or forever hold your peace. <laughs> Sounds like a court. <laughs> we're all on trial, aren't we? We're all uh, we're all on our, our probation. So um, you know, this is what's happening at the moment. We're we're in our probation years, and mm. we know that soon probation will close. Yeah. I don't hear any. Don't see any hands or hear any words. So we'll we'll read these uh, two paragraphs and uh, and begin to discuss it. Uh, okay, sisters, I've got a marker on my on my book, yes. which is on on that on that section. Subjects should be kept before the people. Right. Yes, just but, yeah, but yeah, but it, it's one, two, three, the beginning of the third paragraph. But I suppose we can we can start at the beginning because I don't even remember what we read the last time anyway. Okay, well, let's read the next, before the two paragraphs. We're right at the end of the chapter anyway, so we can do a recap if um, uh, we did do them. Thank you. Okay. The unfilled predictions of the book of Revelation are soon unfulfilled. to... Unfulfilled. You said unfilled. The unfulfilled predictions of the book of Revelation are soon to be fulfilled. This prophecy is now to be studied with diligence by the people of God and should be clearly understood. It does not conceal the truth. It clearly forewarns, telling us that what will be in the future. The solemn message that have been given in their order in the revelation are to copy, copy. occupy the first place in the minds of God's people. You know, it's not to be far from your mind. No, it's, it, we're living in solemn times and somebody, you know. somebody pre i don't know they preached yesterday or somebody said it your first your first thoughts in the morning should be about jesus and the last thoughts before you go to sleep should be about jesus um and especially the last day events that we're studying now you know these things are going to come to pass there's not there's not much left that hasn't been fulfilled in the bible True. You know, we, we know that there's a, just a few prophecies to be fulfilled. All the others have been fulfilled, so there's, uh, so we know definitely that these will be because it, God doesn't stop halfway through and say, well, no, no more prophecies will be fulfilled because we know these have got to be the um, the Sunday uh, law, which is pending. I think it's a privilege to have been living in these last it days. Is. We've seen so much come to pass, you know, um, and, and all the, all the, the Bible predicts, every, the Bible has been, it's been so accurate that mm. it cannot, it cannot yeah. error. It, it cannot doesn't error. error. It the doesn't error. Doesn't you error. know, it's so true that um, it's so accurate. And um, as so much has happened, so much has come to pass, and it's exactly what what was said in the Bible, mm. you know. And the spirit of prophecy amplifies what is said in the Bible. Yeah. So it should be clearly understood. We shouldn't be lying that. Clearly understood. It does not conceal the truth. It clearly forewarns, telling us what will be in the future. Yeah. We've got to think of our glorious future, not the one down here. Mm. <laughs> yeah, we haven't got a future down here. That's true. And the, uh, the world hasn't got a future either, no, has it? No, it's, it's, it's destined for burning. But um, we can have a future. The only way is up. Yep. Our rescue is from the sky. Amen. And God himself. Sister Charlene, thank you. Hi, everybody. Uh, good afternoon. Um, I have actually have a beautiful testimony to, to share. It's not mine. One that I heard has to do with the last last day events. I had my physiotherapist, he was telling me that um, he's a Baptist. We often talk about God and about beliefs. And he was saying that um, a friend of his, not friend of his, somebody he used to be on his football team many years ago. He was telling everybody there about God, but they were actually mocking him and, you know, just not interested in religion. And many years later, a few years, few years ago, I think, I think two years ago, anyway, after COVID had hit, he saw this, saw the man again um, uh, that he had played football with, and he said, "I, the physiotherapist, um, his name is a voter, and he said, I'm sorry, maybe I talked too much to you about God because he thought maybe he had done the wrong thing. He talked too much to, to God to his 
football uh, player, um, you know, that, that played football with him. And the man said, no, no, I'm glad you did because I've come to the Lord. And he said, when COVID hit, the man said, when COVID hit, I realized that there's something going on with this world. There's, there's something wrong here. There's something uh, there's, there's something going on. And, and he didn't know what. And he, one day he was um, just traveling and he couldn't think of much else. And he got on his knees and he said, Lord, if you exist, I want you to give me a sign. And he was just looking outside, waiting for a sign from the Lord. And suddenly there was just this lightning flash in the in the sky, just out of the blue, a lightning flash. And then he thought, okay, that's my sign that the Lord exists. And he got on and, and he fell on his knees again and he just he cried for half an hour and he gave his, his heart to the Lord. So because of COVID, he was woken up. And I just got cold shivers when I heard this testimony that this had woken this man up. And I think all these events are waking us up. And us as Christians, but also people out in the world, waking them up that they see there is a God and things are changing rapidly and people are just talking about them. So God is definitely giving us all these disasters, not to punish us, but to wake us up. Yes, Amen. thank you for that testimony. Uh, some people, you know, a crisis has to bring them, brings them to God and some people it drives them further away. You either look for God or you blame God in, in a crisis and mm, he looks for God. True. And um, you know, I'd like to get another testament. I think, you know, many of you know um, Don Ward, who, who, who um, comes on, on this program sometimes mm. to present, and he's had lots of testimonies. He was saying he was in Bar Barbados. Mm. Yeah, well, that's where he comes from. And uh, he saw this woman walking down. Even his wife saw this woman walking down the street. You know, she... bent double. So, so he said, "We'll pray for her." So he prayed for her, and she straightened up. And she praised the Lord, and she and she's still all well, right now. You know, well. he saw. Uh, 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 it, she told them she was going to the doctors. Yeah. Uh, looking, looking for the doctors to go to yeah. the doctors, and um, you know. he said, "We'll pray for you." And, and that's what happens, you know. So God is real. Yeah, yeah. So he, he knows for, for a fact that God is real, you know, and he, and and he, he he doesn't stand for any nonsense, you know. He's mm. he's straight. straight. Mm. Straight testimony. He says that he says a uh, it's got uh, as a new man come to work at his place and it, and he actually and he was looking for a lift. And he actually lives in the same um, I think, town. Is it, is it a city or town now? Um, Milton Keynes. It's a city now. Uh, and he was looking for a lift. So Don's Don's got. He said I've got him ten hours a week. He said and he's going to have a, a chat with him. He said the Lord brings people to you, and uh, he said you know he's going to. Ask the Lord how to how to deal with it, but he's, he's taking this Muslim to work every day. So, you know, and, and he's, no, it's, it's called Pentecostal. Yeah, no, no, yeah, it's Pentecostal. That's it. It's a Pentecostal, not a Muslim Pentecostal. And um, so he's, he's praying now how he can, uh, you know, win him to the truth. Any more thoughts of these two passages? Don't see any hands up. It just say there with it, these these messages in Revelation should occupy the first place in the minds of God's people. Mm. Um, so that's what we need to be doing: studying the book of Revelation, of course, Daniel, and all the Bible actually. But these books are very important for these last days. And Satan's made sure they closed in some churches. Yeah, D Daniel, Daniel, or Revelation, if they just won't study them. Uh, and I think our mum was at the bus stop years ago and she heard people, took a couple talking and they said, oh, we don't look at the book, book of Revelation because it's closed. That's what we're told. We're told in, uh, in uh, the, uh, these, uh, you know, these days that the um, book of Revelation is closed. So we need to move on. Move on, um, uh, you know, uh, continue to study and to let people know what's happening okay we'll move on to the next um uh two uh, paragraphs does someone would someone like to read these two paragraphs i can read thank, thank you. you there are many who do not understand the prophecies relating to these days and they must be enlightened it is the duty of both watchmen and laymen to give the trumpet a certain sound. This is from Evangelism 194 and 195 of 1875. 
Let the watchmen now lift up their voice and give the message, which is present truth for this time. Let us show the people where we are in prophetic history from testimonies for the church, five, volume 5, 716, and from 1889. There is a day that God had appointed for the close of this world's history. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Prophecy is fast and healing. More, much more should be said about these tremendously important subjects. The day is at hand when the destiny of souls will be fixed forever. Thank you. Uh, and thank, thank you for the reading. I will go back to the, the subject. Um, Trying to find out where I've lost my place now. <laughs> Subject to forget. Where, where did we start from? What's that? What, 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 yeah, we've read three paragraphs. Oh, um, Where do we get to? I think it fixed forever. I think we went back, go back free from there. I think that's it. That's oh, sorry, I'm talking here. <laughs> I'm saying scroll up, but I'm on mute. Okay. There, there, where, where we are right now. The subject should be kept before the read three. Yeah. yeah. So that's um. So we go back to Solomon. The Solomon message. That, that's what should be in people's minds. So it's the subject that we started at. Yeah. Yeah, we've got it right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, there, there are many um, uh, who do not understand the prophecies related to these last days. Some people don't even think we're in the last days. Mm. You think this world will go on forever? They're making plans, building bigger barns. Yeah. It says, let's show us, let's us show the people where we are in prophetic history. As many, do, most people do not know, even 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 the other denominations, the Christians, they, they do not know um, where we are in you know in the prophetic timetable. They just don't know, and it's sad. And we need to do what we can to help people realise um, there are many that do not understand, you know, relating the prophecies relating to these days. They must be enlightened, and that's what we call to do. I don't know if anybody can hear a background, because somebody outside got this machine going, so apologies if it's making a noise. <laughs> We've got workmen next door, but why don't you can hear, they're, they're, they're absolutely good in the house, and <laughs> you can hear all the noise coming through. Yes, next door but one as yeah. well. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the watchmen must now lift up their voices and give the message which is present truth for this time. Mm. We don't want pleasant truth, we want present truth. Because pleasant truth doesn't do any good. Because mm. you're, not, you're not hearing what we should be doing. We, we're not preparing when we're just hearing sermons. Jesus loves me and I can do as I like. You know? mm. As many sermons are preached in, in the churches today. Mm. So don't even believe that you've got to stop sinning before Jesus comes. You know, I was talking about it yesterday at church. We cannot continue in sin. Mm. You know, so, by God's grace, he, he doesn't tell us to do anything that we can't do by, by with his help. Mm. And some even um, are preaching that there's no sanctuary. Others are preaching that the Holy Spirit isn't, isn't the third person in the Godhead. We're hearing all these false um, doctrines, you know, even all these... Um, it's right in the church as well. It is. But we stay in the boat. Mm. There's nowhere else to go. This is the church. It's the remnant church, and it will go through. Mm. Any thoughts, anyone? I forget where it's said, but um, 
I remember reading in Spirit of Prophecy that it says it may appear as if the church would fall, but it will not. Praise and so, so the, I'm just affirming what you said, that this is God's last mm. end time church. Stay in the boat. That's right. That's true. We, we, we know people who've had grievances with what's happened in the church, you know, personal grievances, and they've left and gone to a Sunday church. We know personally somebody's done that. We're praying for them because they've now gone down with cancer, aggressive cancer. And we're praying that they come to the senses before, you know. It's sad when, they, when they're brought up in the truth, you know. It's children brought right up and then when they become, when something happens they're not happy with. Uh, what, what, we know what happened and we know that it was wrong what happened, but um, you can't take your example from man. No, you, you can't, you know, you just don't leave the, uh, the church to go elsewhere because it's the last day church. It's sad. Uh, Sister T Sito there, I see your hand. Thank you. Thank you, sisters. Um, this passage reminds me of the scripture that says, um, my people uh, die because of, of lack of knowledge. And it underscores the, 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 the need for the effort, for, for effort to be made for evangelism for those that know the truth, like, like you guys, like we, like we do, to really uh, pull our sleeves up and go out and do the work so that we can finish the work um that that must be finished before the lord may come and my prayer is that um that all of us because i know there's a lot uh, and in many cases it includes me as well where we are timid we think uh, like i would think oh, i'm only new to the church what do i know what can i tell anyone and a small testimony that that i had with um my husband he he was baptized last year in December, and we've been asked to go yesterday. We were to go out and witness in an old age home. And when when the question came out, when the invitation came out, he was saying, but this is so wrong. This church, the apostasy in the church, uh, how can we go out there and stand in front of people and ask them to come to the church? So I looked at him and I said, uh, didn't you know that there were things that this church wasn't perfect before you got baptized? And he said, yes. And I said, in that sermon from the font, um, now how is it that you came to, to, to be baptized when you knew that this, there was things wrong within the church? It's because you know that whether the people in the church, there, there is, there is, uh, are doing things which they know are wrong, but the truth is still in this church. And and the, the word says this is God's this is the, the God's church in the in the last days. So we can't wait for the church to become perfect. Otherwise, we will never uh, Christ is never gonna come because it's it's never going to happen that it's going to be to be to be perfect. So we do our bit and we leave the rest to God. And eventually, and then I said to him, "Come and listen to what, what, what the chapter we are studying now, chapter thirty-seven. Come and hear the discussions that are going on here, and you will then you will, maybe it will help you. And then, and then praise the Lord. He said yes, and we went and we did our witnessing yesterday. Uh, imperfect people doing witnessing, but God uses anyone, doesn't he? Thank you." Amen. Amen. Thank you for that testimony. And if, if as you say, if we waited to the church, it were perfect. Uh, <laughs> We'd do nothing. <laughs> yeah. Um, Look what the church did to Christ. They killed him. Well, they had the Romans to do a dirty work for them. Uh, and uh, I think uh, the, uh, Stephen, Stephen. Just, he, he described it just right, didn't he? he just he, and that got him so out of chapter seven. Stoned, yeah, they stoned him to death. Because he, he described the church, you know, the, the um, Jewish so You church. killed the prophets. Uh, yeah. You know. And, uh, and he, he just told them how, how it was. Okay, we'll just look at the the, 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 the the paragraph that was just read, this one. Yeah. 
It was a day that has been appointed for the close of this world's history. Yeah, and it's right on time. God's never late. Yeah, even when he went, Lazarus, he was four days late, but not, but right on time. Amen. Man thought he was four days late, and the and they were not, you know, he'd be still in the grave, but Lazarus, but Christ came and raised him. Mm. So he's always on time, right on time. Right on time. Not not too early and not too late. Prophecies fast fulfilling, much more should be said about these tremendously important subjects, much more. And this is what we should be hearing from the pulpit. Mm. We should be have preparation sermons, not to Jesus loves me, live as I like. They're, they're some of the ones we're getting. Um, but we need we need the present truth sermons to, that will stir people, that will you know get them to uh, do the work, and also to get them realise they've got to come up themselves. Because we've all we've all we all fail on different things. Yeah, we're all on different level. levels um, oh. on different things. Somebody might be, uh, you know don't have a problem with one thing but another thing and then yeah. vice versa you mm -hmm. know you know and uh, you see it in the church you see um somebody's they, they can go up the front and they they, they they pre you know they're talking about uh, some of the sisters will go up the front and they're talking about it and you think we've really got a really close close um, a relationship with jesus but you look how they're dressed and that's telling a different story and you know you've got to pray because uh it, it's a sad it's sad you know, I don't know about the churches you go to, but ours is like a catwalk at times. Yeah. You know, the summer and the, the high hills, really high. You know, you, we, sometimes you wish you got some secutors and <laughs> chop, chop. <laughs> but uh, I suppose. <laughs> but uh, as we said, people are all different levels. You know, we don't know where everybody comes from. You, you know. know and, and, uh, uh, but when, these, when these are, these are through. Advent baptised. They're not yeah, new people. It's true. It's not, they're, yeah. they're baptised, you know, seasoned, seasoned members. Um, I mean, you, you see, the, see the, the young ladies, and then you see the mother. I thought well, the mother's not setting an example with a dress. Mm. You know, it's not just the young, young girls. It, it's, yeah, it's the, it's the, it's the uh, older ones as well. It's sad. Anybody got any thoughts about these, uh, these paragraphs before we move on? Okay, let's move to the next. Uh, that's a big paragraph. We'll just read that one. Great pains should be taken to keep this subject before the people. The solemn fact is to be kept not only before the people of the world, but before our own churches also, that the day of the Lord will come suddenly, unexpectedly. The fearful warning of the prophecy is addressed to every soul. Let no one feel that he is secure from d the danger of being surprised. Let no one interpret no one's interpretation of prophecy rob you of the conviction of the knowledge of events which show that this great event is near at hand. So we mustn't let nobody rob us. That, uh, you know that we've got plenty of plenty of time. We don't we don't know if our probation is going to close today. We don't know. You know, you don't know whether you're going to be involved in an accident or get ill or something. You don't know. We don't know the future. All we know the future we've got is with God. You know, and if and we've got to stay close to Christ, otherwise, um, it won't be good. We, won't, we mustn't let anyone rob us of of, um, of eternal life. As, as the song says, don't let don't let anybody take your joy. You know, if you get joy in the Lord, uh, there's nowhere else to go, and um, he gives you, a, he fills that longing in your heart for something better. And it says the fearful warning of the prophecies is addressed to every soul. Let no one feel that he is secure from the danger of being surprised. Let no interpretation, no one's interpretation of prophecy rob you of the conviction of the knowledge of events which shows this great event is near at hand. And that starts warning for us all, you know. We don't want to have itching ears and listen to people who we know is not preaching the truth. You know, you've heard of sad stories where somebody's gone to try and convert somebody who's not preaching the truth and they've ended up Believing, believing what they say. Yeah, believing yeah. what they say. Because Ellen White warned someone, don't go to these meetings, and he went and he turned out to be one of them, mm. you know. 
citing these, he, he, he's at, well, he's had 6,000 years of, um, that's more than that, because he was in heaven, he was causing havoc. But he, he, he's, he's had a long time mm. to practice mm. uh, getting people on his side. Any more thoughts, anyone? Okay, we'll go to the next section. We've got two short tests of two. Who would like to read these two paragraphs, please? Oh, it's 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 totally right then. We'll go, go back. back to the last one. <laughs> Sorry, I was struggling with putting my hand up. Um, this this, this uh, paragraph has got uh, very solemn warnings eh, about us being complacent in, in, in our sins uh, and believing that what we know is or sleeping in our sins, in other words, this fearful warning of prophecy addressed to every soul. Let no one feel secure from the danger of being surprised. Um, I, I've got, I've got, I believe that uh, in a way we have got, we are in, in danger of, of feeling that we are okay. And then the other one, the other one is that the interpretation of another. So what, what I'm taking away from this, from this paragraph is we do need that Holy Spirit like we have never needed him before. Otherwise, uh, um, the, the scripture says that Satan is going to deceive even the very elect. So we are, there's no one who is, who is exempt from, from Satan's wiles. So um, uh, the, 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 the need for the Holy Spirit is, is being highlighted here that, hey, stop with the eye that we always want to rely on. And let's look to Christ and the Spirit is the, through which He lives through us to help us through this difficult time. After all, that's what He, he says to us: hey, if we abide in Him and He abides in us, we have nothing to be afraid of. But uh, yeah, it's so the morning. Thank you. I don't know if you. Um, I don't know if I heard you correctly or not but it says if it were possible the devil would deceive the very elect but he's not going to if it were possible but it's not possible for the very elect to be deceived I just wanted to make sure I don't know if I misheard you but I just want to make sure that that was clarified thank That's you a, a very important point if but but by God's grace, we're not going to be deceived. Yeah, if we've studied God's word and understand it, you can spot, you can spot error a mile off. Yeah, you know, they don't. Uh, when when people uh, bankers, you know, when they first get the job, they don't study the they don't study the um, forgeries, <laughs> fakes. They study the true the, the true um, five pound note or ten pound note or ten dollar note or wherever you live. They study the, the genuine ones, and so they can spot the error straight away. And um, you know that's how that's how it has to be, Sister Charlie. Thank you. Yes, hello. <clears throat> yes, it's just interesting to see how many differences we actually have with these Sunday keeping churches. Because with a physiotherapist, they also believe that your soul goes to heaven and your body stays, you know, day dead. And and I was actually giving him Bible verses, not to argue, but just to help him. But he said, no, I still don't believe it. And and I was like, oh, I was really sad. I was like, oh, it's, just, it's right there. But, you know, we can't force people. And uh, um, we can just show them the truth and it's up to them. And also that state of the dead and um, what was the other, the many other things uh, like uh, once saved, always saved. And and so we know, I, I think we're one of the few churches who really, like, as you were saying, we are the, the elect and uh, that really believe the truth because these Sunday keeping churches that really don't have the, the truth and it's, it's really sad, but we've got to be patient with them and just keep praying for them and hope that they will see that and, you know, see the truth. Because why would Jesus have to die on the cross if if we were all saved? And that, as you were saying, we could just keep sinning and sinning and sinning and, and we're going to be saved anyway. So there would be no need for Christ to die. So that, that doesn't really, if, if you think of it that way, it doesn't really make sense. But we just got to pray for them. And uh, and I actually gave him the great controversy and he said, no, but Ellen G. White 
And that's what a lot of these Sunday churches, particularly Ellen G. White was, uh, she also was with the movement that made the mistake, yeah, they call it making mistake, you know, that the Lord was gonna come. But I said, no, she was young and she was only 18 you know, at the time um, this all happened. And um, so she wasn't, yeah, she obviously, she was she was a young person. So she wasn't the one leading the movement thinking that Jesus was going to come. But then I explained to him that the, something big did happen. Jesus, excuse me, went to the sanctuary so, just to plead for us. And he was looking at me like, hmm. He didn't, he'd never heard of these things before. So, we, you know, we just got to share these things and hope that people's eyes will be opened and, and yeah, have compassion and be patient with them. And, uh, yeah, that's all we can do is pray. Yes, that's true. It's, it, as, uh, well, the majority of Christians, uh, they do not know. They do not know. They've got all the kind of, um, some believe when you die, you go to heaven. Some believe you go to purgatory. I can remember we was invited to sing at a wedding. No, was it a funeral? funeral. No, it was a funeral. Get funeral. it right. A funeral at um, a Catholic church. What happened? He was an Adventist, but he was never baptised. So he the family out. who were Catholic claimed he was, you know, as Catholic. He <laughs> got two sisters who were Adventists, and they still are. What? Well, well, they were they were born Catholics, and one well, wouldn't go in the church. I'll come out of Babylon. I'm not going back in. She says. So she's given great controversy books outside the church. Anyway, we was asked to sing, and we went in, and we sang a song about the. It's called uh, "When He Comes Down." It's the state of the dead and the second coming of Christ. I thought if they are not going to get a sermon in, in the message, they, they've got to get one in the song. <laughs> you must have sang "Midnight Cry." <laughs> Yeah, it was a call when he comes down. And um, yeah, that's but the one we But learning. first of all, when he went in there, the, the nun was terrible with us. She, uh, we, you had to go and I park, to, the, I car to park the car. I had to get a ticket from the church to park the car. Yeah, it was in London. So, you know, parking's horrible there. You had to get a ticket. Anyway, um, so I went in and uh, I stood at the back of the room. I says to, to, the, to the nun, um, we got a backing track and um, we need somebody to work it for us. Anyway, she and, and then and she said, "Sit down." So I sat down, and then she um, went was over the side of the room, and I stood up. I told you to sit down. I thought, "Oh dear." <laughs> we know what was actually she, saying. She was trying to get us angry, so we yeah, so we broke out. Yeah, but we so, didn't. <laughs> and anyway, um, so it's, it's happened several times. Yeah, I thought we said it was, it was, it was irreverent in the sanctuary. I said, well, I've got this backing track and I need somebody to do it. Anyway, the, the minister came in then. The priest. The priest, yeah. yeah. And um, I said to him, you know, I've got this backing track and you need to, somebody needs to do it. And that the, the equipment was in another room, what made it worse. He said, well, can't you do it yourself? I says, no. I says, I can't sing and do it myself. You know, you can run from one room to the other and make sure You've got to make the right. volumes right. You've got to everything. balance everything. Anyway, reluctantly, he did it. And afterwards, the nun came over, she was falling over herself, she was so nice to us. And we had to sing at the, the brother's wedding, at funeral, funeral a few funeral. years later. And um, she was so nice with us, she, you know, she made everything right for us, you know, yeah. uh, got everything ready for us with the backing tracks and everything. We sang the same song again. <laughs> I thought, give him another message. <laughs> but we are learning the midnight cry. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's a good one. Sister Brown, would you like to... Uh, Make your comments, please. Good morning, everyone. Uh, yes, um, uh, the the very top it says um, says the, the message would have to be shared to people. Keep the subject before people, but then it also says before our own church also. And um, it reminded me about because it's going to be a sudden, unexpected, and for many a surprise. And uh, it reminded me of the disciples where Jesus was like telling them, this is what's going to happen. And, and, and this time it's going to happen. And, and when it happened, it was an, an overwhelming surprise for many, of, if not all of them. And um, it just reminds us that um, as, as Ellen G. Wright wrote, wrote in previous time, that many will still be on. We just don't know how terrible this time will be until it happens. So we should remain in a, we should get to a place of prepared readiness and just prepare spiritually and as well as physically 
because this time that's going to come, it will it will cause a shake in. It will be cause a violent shake in in the church. I mean, because it's just going to be unlike anything we've ever imagined. Even the movies don't have it as 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 vivid as what's going to happen. But God is so faithful that as we are faithful in learning of him and studying of him and building that relationship with him now, he will prepare us to be ready then. And so um, that's what stood out to me. Um, thank you. But I think what's important is for us to determine what it is, what it means to be prepared. And 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 really study and work on that. Make that our daily task. It you know it is relationship, of course, building that relationship. But also, we need to be making sure that we understand what we believe, because we are going to have to defend it. I mean, there's so many things that people, like if we don't um, just, if we not just surface say, be prepared, we actually need to figure out what does that mean? Just like people say, well, are you saved? What does that mean? Are you saved? What does that mean? And really study that and make that um our focus so that we are in fact prepared but because you can't prepare when it's happening prepare preparation means you did it before and we know that it is coming soon too soon i live in the u.s and just yesterday is it yesterday or friday uh i think it was friday there was an earthquake in the tri-state area and we don't get earthquakes just last week a bridge in my city collapsed that francis scott key bridge if you've gotten gotten over to the other side of the world where you guys are so we have to really we need to work on that we need to work on that. And I'm talking to myself. That's why I'm, I chose to join this study today. And yes, thank so you for true. your comment. So we saw, I was actually saw it on the news about the bridge and, and the earthquake. Was it New York area? I'm not sure which areas it was. But the it was, was it was in New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut. It could be yeah. felt. Yeah. We, we had a, uh, you tell them about your yeah. earthquake, because we don't get earthquakes. So very, very, very rare. We had an earthquake. Um, mm. wasn't very, it wasn't, well, middle of the night, my bed flew up in the air. <laughs> and I thought to myself, why has that happened? And you know, try to, you try to get things right in your mind, why, you know, answers. And I says to Arlene when she woke up, I says, why did you get out of your bed and come over and lift my bed up in the air lift and the end of it, slam, slam it, it down? down? She says, I didn't. I said, you did. I saw it, you know, it was dark, dark, so I couldn't see the end of the bed, but I just, I just knew it flew up in the air and back down again, and it slammed. It, went to, it was a Friday, a Friday night, went to church Sabbath morning, and somebody said, did anybody sleep through the earthquake? Because <laughs> we don't get them here, we know, we're like you are, we don't get them here. And um, when the, with the odd one, I can remember all the, all the glasses shaking one day, but I, I can remember perhaps two or three at the most, with, you know, and they were the little ones, nothing, mm. no damage. I think one, I think Birmingham, Birmingham one. got one once, yes. yeah. You cracked the pavement, but that, that was yeah, all. that was all. But you know, these things are happening. And you know, we know that it's the sign of the times. Mm. Yeah. Any more thoughts on this uh, paragraph? I suppose if we studied it all again, we'd get more <laughs> thoughts. <laughs> Let's just see what's coming next. It's gone. <laughs> yeah, that's it. We'll, we'll leave that till next time. Which one's the, 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 that's the last one that was done. Mm. 
Is that so, the number three? So any final thoughts before we go to prayer on this last paragraph? We're so blessed to have the spirit of prophecy in our church and it's sad that many people uh, don't accept it. We live, we go to one of the uh, few present truth churches in Britain. In Britain. That's Northampton Central. Mm. And by God's grace, we've managed to keep the drums out. <laughs> by God's grace. We're still trying to fight to get them in, but we, you know, by God's grace, we just don't want them um, because they just take over. And... Uh, yeah, so, and people come from all other towns, a lot of people coming from other places to our church because they're getting the messages. Yeah. Yeah, this fearful warning of prophecies addressed to every soul, everyone. Mm. Yeah. It's whether you take heed or not, that's, um, we have the choice. Yeah, we have the one choice. thing we're told, that we're not to worry about the time of trouble unless we're going through it twice. Mm. It's going to be far worse it's, than we, we know imagined, that. We know that. but God will be with us if God is Christ is for I mean, you. God it, is for you, can be against yeah. you. Who would have thought that um, about four years ago now, would it be? Three, mm. four years ago, we'd be all locked in our houses. No, it was bad in Britain. We was locked in our houses. We were told we could have one walk a day. And what we found out later was Downing Street was having their party Number day. 10. Number 10. Get party the right number. No masks, no nothing. They no, were just no social distancing. It was, it, was a, it, was a, it was a trial run to see what they can do. But we found, we, 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 when, we was a, when it first came about, we didn't, um, it was on Tuesday night and we was in our, in our church. church. We'd got a campaign with Elder Godfrey de Guishi. And um, at 8 o'clock everybody had to be home. Well, we know. didn't know about no it. No public building open. Uh, and, uh, and This uh, was half past eight and we found out oh, we're breaking the law. <laughs> we didn't find out till afterwards. But, uh, but um, that's how quick it can go, it's like just a flick of a switch. Yeah, and so the rest of it went on Zoom. Uh, um, he's a powerful speaker, Elder Goff in the Great Show. He comes to prayer retreats sometimes, and he, we'll have to ask him when he can do another online um, mm. you know, visit. Yes, yeah, so that's, uh, that's how quickly things can happen overnight. But... Um, I think that's why the Prime Minister of the, of the day well, he is not the Prime Minister anymore because um, uh, well, people aren't going to stand for that. You're locked in your houses and they're having parties and no masks, no, no social distancing, nothing. And uh, it's not good. I don't know how they thought they'd get away with it. I don't know. <laughs> I, just, I just don't know how they thought they'd get away with it. But they did for a while until mm. it became public. You know, we see these things. Anyway, thank you everyone for the comments and thank you all that joined. We're going to now share the screen and have the prayers. Let me just um, stop sharing the screen. Just finding where we are. Who would like to do the prayer for praise and thanks? I'll take that, sis. Right, thank you. Um Psalm 100 verses 1 to 5, or one of your choice. Who would like to do confession of sin? I'll do that one then. Who would like to pray for the Holy Spirit? I'll take that one. Yeah, thank you. Romans fifteen thirteen or one of your choice. And who would like to pray for prayer retreat ministries? Of what ministries? Prayer retreat ministries. This ministry that we um part of. Prayer retreat ministries. I'll take that. Right, thank you. And uh, the scripture reading is Mark sixteen fifteen or one of your choice. Um. 
so we'll have 30 seconds um, prayer that we start, silent prayer that we write with God and then we'll ask a prayer, uh, I think it's Sister Sitoli was it, prayers and thanks to begin. Amen. Amen. Um, for praise and thanks, I read Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise um, unto the Lord, all ye lands. Save the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Our Father who art in heaven, Lord, be thy name, may your kingdom come. May your will be manifest in our lives as it is in heaven. Thank you, Father, for the gift of life, for allowing my friends and I once again to come at your feet, to sit at your feet and read from the, your inspired pen of your servant, the lesser light on, on, on your word. Thank you for making it possible for us to meet from all corners of the world and for holding the airways for the truths that were revealed as we said and heard you speak to us. And Father, before I continue, please forgive my sins and the sins of those that are bowed down here, Lord. Wash us with the blood of the Lamb that these prayers may may be acceptable to you and for the Holy Spirit to come and join us and help us to to uh, teach us what to pray for and, and how to pray. Thank you for just loving us that you have made every provision for those that choose to be able to find salvation and find it now. Thank you for providing us for our natural needs, food on our table, clothes on our backs, the roofs over our heads, shoes on our feet. And thank you for the things that we are able to do, that we are here when, at the time we went to bed last night, some people did not, did not come out of their sleep this morning because we know that there is work that still needs to be done in each one that you woke up. And there is work that you have um, allocated to us before the coming of our Lord. That needs to be completed. Thank you for the, the things that we take for granted, the sun that comes out when it needs to, the seasons that change, the rain that comes, all the creation that is around us that make life possible. And, and for the things that we, like the nine lepers, forget to come and say thank you for we thank you father for the blood of the lamb and that we are able to understand um intellectually the truth that you are revealing to us help us father to internalize them and meditate on them and allow these truths to change us and give us readiness as one of the sisters saying this, what your word says, that now is the time for readiness. We cannot be looking to get ready for the coming of the Lord when he is coming or when to be ready for the little time of trouble when the trouble is here. And so thank you, Father, for all the warnings, for all the promises, for your word and for making it possible for us to, to come together to encourage one another 
to study your word and learn with each other from one another about you and to bring us close to each to each one of us to 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 bring us closer to you thank you father for this platform and for holding the airways please continue to bless um the work that is being done on this platform reaching out many lives and changing many lives many more lives than than what is happening here and thank you father for your love and for your mercy this is my prayer in the precious name of Messiah Yeshua. Amen. Matthew 6 verse 15 But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Heavenly Father, we come to you this afternoon. We're all sinners, we've all fallen short of the glory of God. We pray now that you'll be with us. We pray, Lord, for the forgiveness of every sin. And as it says in the text that we must forgive others, because if we don't forgive others their sin against us, we will not be forgiving ourselves and that is very serious. So help us not to bear grudges. Help us not to um, do uh, two wrongs don't make a right. So we pray, Lord, that um, we that we can forgive others. We pray, Lord, that, that um, you'll, you'll be with us and keep us faithful in these last days. We've all fallen short of the glory of God, but we thank you for dying for, our, dying for us so that we can have our sins forgiven. Thank you for the, the promise that um, you gave us, that um, you, you will save us and will help us to um, help us to be, um, we know we cannot do it of our own, we need the grace of God in our lives to be saved. And so we pray, Lord, that you'll be with us and keep us faithful in these last days. And we thank you for all the blessings in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. 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 I'm reading from Romans 15, verse 13. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you today for giving us this, the Holy Spirit, Lord. We need the Holy Spirit so much, Lord, to show us where we need to change, but also to show us how we can witness to other people, Lord, how we can be the very best and we can um speak what you want us to speak the holy spirit has to tell us what to say because we are just weak vessels lord we do not know how to speak a good word in season how we can drop a little seed in someone's heart but the holy spirit can give us the words to say lord and help others to 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 see the truth and then it's up to them lord and Sometimes all we can do is pray for someone. We cannot change them. And you give them a choice, Lord. That's the most beautiful thing about you. You give us choices. You never force anything on us. But we plead for, Lord, for us, the, the tri triple portion of the Holy Spirit, Lord, as we go out and warn others of these events that are coming, that are going to take place, Lord. This world is going to turn even more ugly. Look what's happening, earthquakes and places that it never happens, Lord. This is all things to wake us up, and we're thankful and grateful. So, Lord, we just pray earnestly for the Holy Spirit to change our hearts and help help others help us to witness as best we can in these end times, Lord. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Paul 16, 15 says, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Lord, we pray this morning for your ministry, Prayer Retreat Ministry UK. Their Lord, they have uh you have put in their heart to fulfill your commission, dear God. And I pray, dear Lord, that you will strengthen them and equip them with all that they need to be faithful stewards of this ministry, your ministry. Dear Lord, keep them trusting in you. Keep them faithful and believing, oh God. And keep them and, and help them to see your guidance, your provisions, your providence, 
in their life, dear God. By faith, Lord, help them to bring forth much fruit, dear Lord, because you are doing it. Help them to water, dear God. Help them to plant, dear God. And Lord, bring forth the increase. Thank you again. And, and whatever they need, dear Lord, whether it be financial or physical assistance or whatever they need, dear God, please continue to bless so that this year ministry will make an impact in the lives in this time of earth history. In Jesus' name. And amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you for the prayers. We'll just stop the recording now. And this is for uh, prayer requests and whatever the Lord lies on your heart.